Merry Meet. I'm Aislinn. This is Ask Aislinn. I'm here tonight talking about Maybon and the intention of gratitude. We'll also talk a little bit about balance and time and some of the other intentions that correspond to the energy of the Wheel of the Year right now. So I'm just going to dive right in. If you're here with me live, you can always leave comments and questions in the chat. And if there's any questions, I can answer those at the end in the Q&A. So Maybon is a Sabbath, and we'll get into a little bit more about what that means. But this is the Sabbath that corresponds with the fall equinox, sometimes called the autumnal equinox. So this year, the fall equinox actually begins today. This is being recorded on Wednesday, September 21st. It begins today at sundown and goes until um, sundown tomorrow, Thursday, September 22nd. So you will see some people celebrating Maybon today, and you'll see some celebrating Maybon tomorrow. And you'll also see some people celebrating Maybon in a week or two from now. And you may have seen people celebrating it even prior to today. So if you were to Google Maybon and ask what day Maybon falls, you're going to see a variety of different answers. So for example, when I Googled tonight, I saw that Maybon, it says on, what, on one place, Maybon begins Wednesday 921 and goes until Thursday 929. So this is an idea of like a week, week's worth of energy for this Sabbath. And then in other places, it talked about Thursday 9.22 to Saturday 9.24. So like a longer three or four day period. Really, in a lot of ways, I think that Maybon should be thought of as more of a season and less of a day. It is true that the wheel of the year turns right at this point of the fall equinox. But the energy really corresponds more to a season. Now, there are some covens who will celebrate before the wheel turns. So, for example, one um, great teacher, Christopher Penzak, who I adore, his coven, the Temple of Witchcraft, they actually celebrated last weekend. And the reasoning behind it was that the, the ritual was designed to help the wheel turn. Now, others covens or groups will actually celebrate afterwards. So in my own tradition, we generally celebrate our Maybon or our other, our all Sabbaths in general after the wheel has actually turned when the energy is more potent. And so I'll get into this a little at the end, but I will be hosting a Maybon ritual next weekend and um, everyone's invited to that. So I'll give you some more details at the end. Now, I want to pause for a moment before getting fully into Maybon. I want to talk a little bit about the Sabbaths. And hi, hi, Jez Adora's here. So I want to talk a little bit about the Sabbaths and what the two categories they are, how they fall into two different categories. So there are the solar holidays. These have been observed for at least 12,000 years that we're aware of. They were originally fire festivals, probably somehow linked to um, agricultural times of the year. So for example, planting, harvesting, and tending to the crops. And during the rise of Christianity, many of the pagan practices were outlawed, as most of us know. And though some pagans willingly, and many more unwillingly, had to convert to Christianity at some point, very few were willing to give up their traditional practices. So what that means is that the church absorbed many of these customs in order to have more willing converts. And we see this very clearly in Imolk becoming Candlemas. We see Ostara becoming Easter and Yule becoming Christmas. And that's just to name a few. Now, over time, many of the converts forgot the actual meanings of the traditions that they were practicing, but they exist nevertheless. And then, of course, with the neo-pagan revival, they came out more into the forefront of everyone's attention. Now, the Wheel of the Year consists of eight holidays. Four are solar, as I mentioned, Yule, Ostara, Litha, and Maybon. So Maybon is one of those solar holidays. These correspond to the equinoxes and the solstices, and there are also four agricultural 
sabots, we have Samhain, Imolk, Beltane, and Lunaza. And these are the cross-quarter days because they fall between an equinox and a, and a um, solstice or a solstice and an equinox. Now, sometimes people are a little startled to find that the original wheel, there wasn't really original wheel of the year. So the way that we know it today in modern pagan practice, it did not exist fully the way it is in ancient times. Uh, now, most of the earth-based um, tribal cultures, they did celebrate some kind of turning of the year, turning of the seasons. But our, our own current Wheel of the Year is an amalgam of practices from different cultures. So namely, the agricultural-based Sabbaths coming from the Celts and the solar-based ones coming from the Teutons, the Norse, and the Germanic people mainly. Um, and many other cultures, as I mentioned, were celebrating in um, the solar year, including the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, just to name a few. Now, before we get into what Mabon means to us, let's just talk a moment about the Wheel of the Year and why, why do we even practice it anyway? So the ancient people believed it was actually necessary to practice, that actually practicing and celebrating the wheel allowed the wheel to turn. So think back to what I said with Christopher Penzak's ritual last weekend. They were, they were doing that in honor of that idea, that, that their ritual was actually helping the wheel turn. The ancient people believed that, that their rituals were necessary. Now we, modern pagans, know that we are not necessary to turn the wheel. The wheel will turn whether we participate or not. And that's very clearly seen in a society that, for the most part, has disconnected from nature. But as modern witches, we celebrate so that we can be closer to nature, closer to the natural energies. I actually believe that when we celebrate, we help heal that part that is um, so divorced and so disconnected from nature. So if you think about the collective, really not being as close to the natural energies as it used to be, we witches, we help heal some of that wound. We also, can use the Sabbaths to just to come together in celebration. And I also think it reminds us that those same energies that turn the wheel, that ebb and that flow of energy, those positive and negative energies, the light half of the year, the dark half of the year, all of that exists within us. And so when we celebrate the wheel of the year, we remind ourselves that those energies inside of us are okay, that we don't have to feel light and happy and positive at all times. There's darkness. There are shadows. There are places to go down into the underworld to challenge, transform, and change us so that we become more spiritually evolved. And I really think that that is what the Wheel of the Year reminds us as modern pagans. So let's shift our attention to Mabon. And I actually brought my coven's Wheel of the Year here to show. So do I have Mabon at the right place? Here we go. So our, what our coven will do is when we celebrate, we turn this each Sabbath and we'll bring the current Sabbath up to the top. And Mabon here is represented by apples and grapes and leaves. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that makes sense in a moment. But I just wanted to share this with you. It's just our way of you know, doing our part and turning the wheel and reminding us of that, that changing energy. Now, as I mentioned before, Mabon is the autumnal equinox, and the, the, the fall or autumnal equinox will occur sometime between the 20th and the 22nd of any given year. So like I mentioned, this year, it's going to fall between the 21st and the 22nd, sundown to sundown on those two days. This is a time when there is equal day and equal night, and it is a transition space since it is a transition between two seasons, between summer and fall. Now the theme, because of all of that, because of the equinox, that equal day, equal night, we have this intention of balance that is going to be very strong here at Maybon. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, including some practices you can do to bring some more balance into your life. But for now, let's continue with some traditional thoughts and um, uh, customs of Mabon. So the land has begun to die and it is becoming more and more apparent. So at Litha, when we shift into the waning half of the year, no one feels that. It always takes us time 
we have to be more fully into the into the cycle before we really feel that energy. Litha is that height of the summer. In fact, Lunaza even is that height of the summer. But by then, the days have started getting shorter. Now, if you're noticing now, you'll see that our sunsets are coming much earlier now. Our sunrises are coming much later, at least until we um, we shift over into daylight savings time. But um, you you just notice that shorter day energy and, and to me i don't know if this is true or not but it seems more accelerated now especially as we kind of hit the equinox i just feel like it just becomes darker and darker earlier and then we feel that almost acceleration of that darkness now if you follow the wiccan story of the goddess and the god maybon is the time when one or both descends into the underworld and that is truly where that kind of journey begins. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the deities that are associated with Mabon. Mabon is the second of the harvest festivals. So back at Lunaza, I talked about Lunaza being the first harvest festival. It's the grain festival. Mabon is more of the fruit festival and gourds, pumpkin squash, apples, grapes. These are kind of the, the bounty that we expect at Mabon. These are the times when we, when we bring the harvest in, we bless it, and in some cases we sacrifice it back to the land. So it does, Mabon does have that element of sacrifice that Lunaza also has, but Lunaza has it a little bit more strongly. The holiday appears to have been named after the god Mabon. He is a Welsh god. He was the son of Modron, who herself was considered to be a personification of the earth. He was known as the light bringer, a divine, the divine son, and in and the god of youth. Now the story tells us that he was born at the fall equinox, and he was considered the great son of the great mother. Now somewhere, depending on which story you read, it'll tell you that he was kidnapped at three days old, or sometimes it will say he was kidnapped at three. Um, years old, but at some point he was kidnapped, he was taken from Modron, and he was taken into a other world, underworld kind of place. This was called Modron's womb. And it was a place where he was challenged and he was transformed and he gained strength and wisdom so that when he came out, he was reborn as the light bringer. Now, during that cap captivity, there are many stories that took place. Some say that he was rescued by an eagle, owl, a blackbird, a stag, and a um, salmon. And then in other cases, in stories, it says he was actually rescued by King Arthur himself. He actually plays a part in some of the Arthur Arthurian legends. So while he was in her womb, though, he transformed into this being that he, that he had to be so that he could bring the light to the world. And so there we see that, that connection of going down into the underworld, transforming and changing, and then coming out reborn as a more elevated person spiritually. Now, there are obvious connections in the story to other underworld myths, namely what, the one that mainly comes to my mind is Persephone and Demeter, whether we look at it as the Roman um, Ceres and Cori or the Greek Demeter and Persephone, that story has a very deep connection to Mabon's story. Persephone herself went into the underworld and she was kidnapped as well. She was kidnapped by Hades because she ate food while she was there. She was tricked into eating. She had to then stay there for half of the year. And then Demeter comes and gets her. And when she returns to the earth, then it brings back that um, the fertility of the earth. We see these kind of stories from culture to culture. And we also see these stories of the harvest being set around this fall equinox, this, work, this celebration of the harvest. Also, we see this across many cultures. So for example, the Greeks had their festival of Dionysius. The Catholics have Michael Mass that takes place on 929. Sometimes also the, the Feast of St. Michael is, re, is um, related to that. The Iroquois had the corn dance. And of course, the original Thanksgiving, well, we think of it as being taking place in Thanksgiving, or sorry, in November. The original Thanksgiving actually took place in October by some counts. And this has led many modern pagans to term Mabon, the witch's Thanksgiving. 
So my coven for many years, we have celebrated some kind of a Thanksgiving feast right at Maybon. It's a time for us to take stock of what we have, what we've been provided with, and feel gratitude for those things. And not only feeling gratitude for what we have, for the bounty of what the year has brought us, but also feeling gratitude for what we don't have yet. And that's kind of an interesting energy to put out there. You know, life is quite hard right now, as I know that many of you know, so much strife and trouble and struggle in the world. And so it is really easy for us to get swept away and carried away in that negative energy and negativity and our negative emotions. So it's really important for us to have a time during the wheel of the year where we remind ourselves of what we actually do have. And Maybon is a great time for that. So one of the things that I think is fantastic to do at Maybon is to write a gratitude list. So just take stock of what you are so grateful to have right now. And what I also love is adopting some kind of a grad, like a daily gratitude practice. So one of my teachers, she t teaches a seven minute gratitude practice first thing in the morning. And so what you do is immediately, as soon as the alarm goes off, or as soon as you wake up, if you don't wake up with an alarm, as soon as you open your eyes, in fact, she says, keep your eyes closed and just lay there conscious. And then in your mind, go over an inventory of all the things you're grateful for. And that may be the same list every day. It doesn't have to change. And then sometimes there are new things that come in and other things that go out. But she recommends seven minutes in her tradition. Seven is a very sacred number. And so she says to just set the timer on your watch or your phone and, and then just do your gratitude inventory for that time until it goes off. Now, when I adopted this practice, it, it is a little bit hard, you know, to just lay there for the seven minutes and kind of meditate on these things, especially if you're not used to it. But it had a profound effect on me in, in a way I wasn't really expecting. And so I really highly recommend this practice. At least try it. You don't necessarily have to do the seven minutes like she said, but even a minute or two of just gratitude before you, you know, get moving. It's, it's just so profound and powerful. Um, so it is also a nice time to give back in gratitude that brings in that idea of sacrifice. So a really good time to donate food or time to like a local food bank or, you know, it is also a nice time to do some cleaning and you know, we clean at spring on the, on the vernal equinox. It's also nice to do some fall cleaning too, kind of clean out the energies as the new season arrives. And so as you do so, gathering the things that you don't need anymore or that you have a surplus of and then donating those to someone who needs them more. And that can just be a really special way of bringing that idea of gratitude in. We also can work with the heart chakra. I think this is really powerful at Maybon and opening up the heart in order to foster a sense of gratitude. You know, there are physical and emotional ways that the heart kind of caves in just physically, even in my own body, sitting at a desk a lot, we round the shoulders down and this is naturally actually closing off the heart and the energy of the heart chakra. So, really working with the heart to have it open and big and um, it can be kind of vulnerable too, especially if you've had some emotional trauma to, um, you know, a lot of people kind of cave in naturally because of that, but challenging yourself to really open up the heart in that, in that sense of gratitude. Um, so I do want to show you a little mudra that I love is the Garuda mudra. Garuda is the Eagle God of the Hindu faith and our pantheon and faith. And the Garuda Mudra is, is associated with the heart chakra. So it's so easy to make. And what you do is you take the palm of the right hand, you're just gonna place it to the back of the left hand like this. And then you just wanna interlock your thumbs. And what you'll see is your fingers then spread out like the wings of, of the eagle Garuda. And then just bringing that into the heart. This is really effective just as you're meditating or maybe when you're doing your gratitude practice like this. And what I also like to do with this mudra is to use it, if I, especially if you're someone who does yoga and you know that a lot of times you come into the prayer position throughout the practice, you can bring your hands to Garuda Mudra instead and just open up that heart space a little bit. 
So I love that. I also love the loving kindness meditation. It is a beautiful meditation. You can do it when someone is guiding you, but you can also do this on your own. It's just getting yourself into a space, closing your eyes, you know, breathing deeply, taking yourself kind of down into bringing your energy down. And then what you want to do is send loving kindness out into the universe and direct it towards a person you know, like someone that you know could really use loving kindness right now. And so you do that for a bit of time and then you shift and now you're going to send the energy. This one's a little tough sometimes, but you're going to send that same loving kindness energy to a person that you had some kind of a conflict with. And so you do that for a bit of time and then send that same loving kindness energy to someone that you don't know. So for example, someone that you have passed by, maybe someone that you, that served you in a store or a restaurant restaurant or in a helping capacity or just someone you passed on the street and just send that loving kindness out to that person. Visualize it reaching them wherever they are. And then this is the one that everybody um, sometimes has a little trouble with or often forgets <laughs> unconsciously or consciously, but then sending that loving kindness to yourself. We are often the ones who in our lives who need it the most and then we're, we rarely give it to ourselves. So sending it back to you. And then the final step is to send that loving kindness out into the universe, um, you know, just out into the ether. So I really love that meditation. And if you think that sounds really great, I'm actually doing a yoga practice that I'll have posted in the group tomorrow that is um, going to use the Garuda Mudra and it's going to use that loving kindness meditation at the end. It's a whole practice on um, opening up the heart chakra to foster gratitude. And it also brings in a little bit of balance too for the, for the equinox as well. So um, Maybon is also a good time to work with shadow work. And we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end when we talk about the energies at this point of the wheel of the year. But there is this natural pull to turn inward. So from about now till the end of the year, even into, I would say, like almost to Imolk in February, this is just a really natural time to really go deep into a shadow work practice. It is also a time of balance, as I mentioned before, because of the equinox being the great balancer where we want to ask ourselves, where do you find balance? And this can be energetically, physically, emotionally, spiritually, just really think about like, what, how does balance play out in your life? Do you have, do you feel that you are balanced? Um, do you feel that there's something in your life that's in balance? So really contemplating those ideas right now. You know, think about the idea of time as well, because it is the great balancer of time. How well do you balance your own time? Are you spending time on things that fill you up the majority of the time? Or is the majority of your time spent on things that bring you down or drain you of energy? So, you know, it's really going to be impossible probably for us to not be drained somewhat. We, we have to work, we have to do, go through our routine our, of our mundane lives. But if you find that there is more that is taking away from your cup than giving to it, now is a time to really evaluate that and see if there are small changes that you can make. You know, you don't have to make this a big thing. Um, you don't need to make it so overwhelming that it becomes impossible to do. When I, by, by day, I teach kids. I'm an educational therapist. And so a lot of my students have ADD and different things that make it hard for them to manage their time. And so one of the things I teach them is don't, don't try to change everything at once. You know, just pick one place and change there. So same goes with this. You don't, if you realize that your life is really out of balance, if you, what I'm saying these things and you're thinking, oh yeah, if you feel that you have more, way, way, way more that's taking from your cup than filling it up, you know, don't get discouraged by that and don't, Feel the overwhelm of having to change everything at once. Pick one small thing and start there. And it really is amazing is when you start to shift that little bit of energy, it just opens up a path that starts to shift a little bit more and then a little bit more down the path and then a little bit more. And so Maybon is the greatest time to start doing that right now. It's also a good time for cleansing, purifying and fasting, depending on your tradition, just use caution. If you've had an eating disorder or anything, it's just want to be very cautious about fasting. But it is a good time for just kind of purifying the body, the mind, the spirit. 
And you can do that through other things besides physical fasting of food. I like to do it through breath work. So the Nadi Shodana is a really great breath for balance. And this is the double nostril breathing. I've shown it before on a video, but it's really simple is that you just close off one nostril. You breathe in through the left nostril when you close off the right, and then you close off the left nostril. You breathe out through the right and then breathe back in through the right. And you're just going back and forth, breathing in and out between the different nostrils. And so it's really good for balancing the system really quickly. It brings down anxiety, but I think the best part about it is it balances our energy. And it's also very cool because it connects the root chakra up to the third eye, which is the seat of our intuition. So it's just, you can't go wrong with this breath. It's, it's just a really great one. And as I mentioned before, you know, yoga practices that help you balance are really good too. Like the one that, um, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing tomorrow in the group or posting there tomorrow. Now, if you would like to make an altar for Maybon or have a ritual of some kind, altars are really great when you decorate uh, at Maybon, when you decorate them with apples, grapes, leaves, gourds, squash, uh, cornucopias, different, different fall, anything kind of reminds you of fall, those would be great things to place on the altar. You know, the colors are fall colors, red, yellow, orange, brown, um, purple, gold. Now, deity archetypes are different than deities. So the deity archetypes for Mabon are the earth and the grain mother. So we see that a lot in that Demeter and Ceres goddess, um, Modron, Mabon's mother, Pachamama, these are all these like earth-based goddesses, Gaia. Um, and then the god archetype is typically the messenger or the magician god. And as an archetype, he is the one who often descends into the underworld or he brings messages across from the other world to us. Now, deities in particular, though, if you practice with deities, would, good ones to use at Maybon would be Maybon and Modron themselves, since they are the namesakes of the holiday, Demeter Ceres, Persephone, Cori, whichever form you use, the Roman or the Greek ones, Proserpina, Rhiannon, Inanna, these are a lot of deities that descend into the underworld, you'll probably notice, Tammuz, Dionysius, Bacchus, and, and of course Pachamama. Now, I do want to uh, talk a bit here at the end about the solar and lunar cycles and how they connect because we sometimes don't think about that. We are, we, we kind of work with our lunar energy and we work with our solar energy, but we often don't think about how the two energies really connect. So sometimes the solar and the lunar cycles will line up, not always, but sometimes they do. And so here's what I mean by that. Maybon, if you think about Maybon in the wheel of the year, Maybon would correspond to the last quarter moon of a lunar cycle. So each Sabbath is going to correspond to a different part of the wheel, uh, sorry, a different part of the lunar cycle. So the energies of a Sabbath get accentuated when the lunar cycle is in alignment. So Imolk, Ostara, Beltane, and Litha, they all take place during the waxing phase of the, of the um, solar cycle of the wheel of the year. And Lu, Lunaza, Mabon, Samhain, and Yule, they take place during the waning part of the wheel of the year. So this year, Mabon is actually going to align in the waning part of the lunar cycle. So right now, we are in the waning crescent. We actually are, put, we're going to cross over into the balsamic part of the waning crescent tomorrow. And because Mabon has that waning energy in the solar cycle, and because the wax, the waning crescent has that waning energy in the lunar cycle, this amplifies the energy right now of Mabon. So it's just kind of a neat way to think about it. And you, you know, it doesn't mean that if we're in the waxing part of the lunar cycle during Mabon that it's bad or anything, but it's just on those particular ones that line up lunar and solar together, those are particularly energetic and powerful. Um, so I just wanted to mention here at the end that I am going to be doing a Maybon ritual for gratitude. I believe it's going to be taking place next Friday, September 30th at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. 
And we're going to be working with the intention of gratitude. I have a really beautiful meditation planned. Um, we're going to work with Pachamama, the pre-Incan earth goddess. This ritual will be live on Facebook. I haven't, I haven't determined if it's going to be in the group or the page yet, but it'll be shared both places so everybody get a chance to come to it. I'll be posting more details soon, so I hope you can come to that. And I'm going to see if there's any questions here that are left. So that is all I have for you tonight. And I hope that you have some great plans for Maybon. And if you don't, I hope you'll come to my, um, my ritual next week. And even if you do, come to my ritual next week and celebrate with us and just kind of really foster some gratitude. Just feel, if you just really breathe in right now and feel the energy of the, of the season. So even if you can't get out today or tomorrow, get out this weekend. Remember I said it's, it's not... If you feel like you missed Maybon, you didn't miss Maybon if you couldn't do something today or tomorrow, you got a whole six weeks of this season. So really just think about how you can foster gratitude, how you can find some balance in your life and, um, and you know, how you can purify yourself and get ready for the winter. All right, I will sign off for now, but happy Maybon everyone until next time. Blessed be.